Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar. We're excited to show you our new PCX calibration management software. My name is Nick Valpone. I'm the founder of Prime Technologies. And for those who don't know our company, we've been a global leader of calibration management software for over three decades. Our flagship products are ProCal V5 and ProCal Direct. And this is our new web-based PCX application. It at this time has limited capabilities compared to our flagship products, but it will be evolving quickly to uh, catch up with features and functionality. For those who are using our ProCal solutions, fear not, we're still gonna be evolving that system as well and supporting it for many years to come. But right now we're gonna show you the first release of PCX and I'll turn it over to Mike McClenney. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, I'm Mike, uh, Mike McLean. Been with Prime for 20 years under uh, support and development. Uh, lately, uh, product manager for new product development. Um, I have the honor and privilege of demonstrating PCX, a uh, new web application that we're very proud of today. And I'm just excited to be here. Uh, hope you guys can, uh, you know, give me your, your questions in the Q&A and I'm looking forward to demoing the software. Uh, but first, Ken will have a little presentation. So uh, thanks for having me, Ken. Appreciate it. Thanks very much for joining us, Mike. Really appreciate it. Uh, hi, everybody. My, uh, my name is Ken Wax. I've been at uh, Prime Technologies for about seven years now. I work with uh, many of our larger clients, including in the chemical manufacturing and power generation industries. I also manage our worldwide uh, reseller network for ProCal for Prime Technologies. And um, I do training and implementation consulting with some of my clients uh, to use our calibration uh, software. We are recording this webinar. Everybody attending will receive a link. But I wanted to stress, if you have questions to ask uh, at the end, please feel free to put those questions in the Q&A section and we will make sure to, uh, to address them uh, as quickly as we can. Um, a couple of points that uh, we'll cover today. So Nick's uh, talked a little bit about the history of, you know, prime technologies, our mission, our role in the I&E space. Uh, we'll talk about calibration, of course, most importantly, what we bring as a company in terms of experience, expertise, and solutions. Uh, we're here to talk uh, about PCX. So we'll go into the features that make it a widely applicable calibration management solution for many industries. We are represented today, in fact, by a number of attendees in those key industries, and several of, of our guests today are existing ProCal uh, users, so uh, I want to welcome you all. Mike is going to be providing a live on-screen tour of the current release of PCX. He'll also touch on some features that we won't see during the demo. We'll talk about them a little bit, as well as our development roadmap. And then finally, uh, I'll talk a little bit about what you could be doing today in order to prepare yourself to implement a solution like PCX. And then of course, at the end, we'll do the Q&A section uh, you know, to, to talk about all of your questions. Before we go too deep into the presentation, I just had a short comment, and this is parroting something that, that Nick said earlier, but it's very important. Uh, this is a message to both our existing customers and anybody who's with us that's in the process of evaluating a calibration management uh, solution. Our current release of uh, PCX is not currently validated. It's in an early stage of product development. As a result, it's mainly suitable for a subset of the industries that are currently served by our flagship product, uh, ProCal V5. So PCX may be the right choice for you at this stage, but ProCal will remain uh, uh, you know, the more feature uh, rich solution for many years to come. Uh, so there's no reason that you have to choose to jump uh, today. Now let's talk about that uh, a little bit. You know, some of the industries that the current release version of PCX would work for, as I stated earlier, PCX has yet to be validated. So non-FDA regulated manufacturing of all types will be a good fit. The other industry list, the other industries listed here have very straightforward approaches to calibration. And so PCX would also be a, a good choice for those. If you're currently using Fluke documenting calibrators, by the way, uh, PCX will eventually work well. And Mike is gonna talk a little bit about that in his roadmap uh, uh, discussion. <clears throat> um, why do 
customers come to us or more generically, why do instrumentation professionals seek a calibration management system like PCX? First of all, data disorganization is something we do see fairly often. You know, we meet clients all the time that still have their asset data, calibration specs uh, in paper records, on spreadsheets, electronic files, you know, organized in shared folders. That's fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it tends to lend to difficulty searching for the information and you know, responding to issues in a timely manner. Second thing is it's hard to facilitate good communications when your asset scheduling and planning data is not at your fingertips. So lack of communications is also something that we, we often see. Audits can be brutal, uh, but as many of our clients have learned, they don't have to be. And surviving an audit really depends on well, you know, organized historical calibration data. If you take a look at the testimonials on our website, for example, you'll see that customers over the years have found our software to be invaluable in that respect. Uh, fourth, the managing assets in a comprehensive fashion is key. Having critical information easily available and in one rigorously managed and centrally located repository. And then lastly, you know, lack of uh, actionable insights into your asset inventory can lead to poor decision making. Uh, you know, things like reverse traceability and calibration point trending, you know, are examples of, of things that, you know, are good to have in place. <clears throat> so PCX may be new, but our experience in the calibration management space is not. And touching directly on the previous slides, bullet points, all of those problems have solutions. Centralized uh, source for your data, storing it in a well-defined database system, ensures the uh, ability to search and report on assets, standards, and historical data. PCX interface accentuates these capabilities, and we have some very useful search features to augment it. Making accessibility simple and providing the tools uh, to your staff to be as effective as possible. Examples of this would be fast and easy setup of the calibration strategy, uh, having all the math done automatically, auto, auto recalc, uh, recalc of limits, for example, having reports readily available, all these things provide important tools for your INE team. Paperless data management gets you much closer to a rigorous uh, data integrity, which is key. And standardizing your specs and making sure that you're accounting for regulatory compliance factors are also very important. Standardization saves your team a lot of time and it ultimately makes auditors uh, happy when it comes to requests for information because you can fulfill them very quickly and easily. Accurate and easy to read data presentation is also vital. PCX makes this easy through built-in reporting and dashboards. And then finally, making educated decisions depends on getting the right metrics in front of you and your team. And as you would expect, we have standard reports built into PCX to, uh, to help you do that. Few, a few final thoughts uh, before we join with Mike in the, in the software demo. PCX, like most other SaaS software, requires very little installation. Little or, little or no to installation. It's accessible from anywhere. And the scalability allows companies to better keep pace with their competition. Uh, the configuration of a new piece of software, for example, can delay the startup time considerably and can be a barrier to implementation. We've added some pre-configuration tools to PCX to expedite this process. Uh, we aim to design an interface that looks more like the web applications you and your team are already using and that flattens the learning curve, and it allows users to focus on the task at hand. Of course, one of the benefits, one of, the benefits of SaaS is continual updates as well, uh, regularly scheduled improvements to the logic, to the interface, to the visuals uh, within the application, and our roadmap reflects this, which Mike will be talking about a little bit later. And finally, the importance of, of having critical information easily accessible and in a timely fashion uh, the PCX dashboard ensures that users can find what they need quickly and determine what, uh, you know, what actions they need to take. So at this point, uh, I'm going to turn the uh, mic over to Mike McLean and to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the software and give us a live in-system demo. Mike? Great. Thanks, Ken. Um, so first, we're just going to go over, you know, what we are going to show you in the live demonstration, just so you can get an idea of where we're going to head with this. Uh, and then we'll go into the live demo. 
So what we want to concentrate today is just sort of the high level touches of the workflow in PCX. So the high level navigation, where is everything? Does it look familiar to you in terms of like other applications that we've seen out there in the business world? Uh, we want to look through our search, our filtering, our basic view controls, just to see how easy that is to set up, right? We want to look at our main records, like our asset records, as well as test specifications. Uh, that's how we do the calibration. So very similar to the calibration point groups that we have in ProCal. We want to look at the result entry process. You know, what is that like compared to ProCal's calibration records or what you're faced with in the field to do those calibrations and enter them uh, in a rigorous system? And then we'll just do a brief overview of the reporting and export capabilities that are in the system. So at this point, uh, we're gonna do that first look at PCX, what everybody's here for, thanks a lot. All right, let me share my screen, get right into it. And, um, great. All right, so uh, PCX is a web-based application. It's using your email and password to get into the login form. Uh, uh, Google Chrome is nice enough to save my information and let me sign in. Um, so this is, again, something that if you have forgot password concern, other things like that, it's all available to you right from the sign-in screen uh, on the web application. Uh, a quick tour, you know, where we start from. Uh, we'll just go over this first home page, which is our dashboard page today. Um, the dashboard is a nice quick view of what's happening in your organization and what you need to focus on potentially that day. Uh, also, just general trends. Are, are your assets growing or shrinking? Are results uh, growing or shrinking month to month? Uh, in the year-over-year -year calibration count, when you compare the current activity to the past year's activity, are you expecting a big spike in activity or you're expecting a reduction? Are you in line with the like, amount of calibrations you saw last year or, or are you growing? And then even maybe most key here is that calibration schedule overview. Nobody wants to see a red block that big, uh, this obviously this organization is not well organized and they need to go in there and figure out what's going on with those 17 late items. Uh, but what's nice about these dashboards is it will give you those click through ideas of getting through to your overdue assets, your coming due assets, in this case, 60 days out, or your on time assets that are due sometime in the future. This is just covering the items that have a next calibration date or a due date in the system. So that's the quick idea of that overview of the dashboard that you first see. But in terms of actually how to navigate and how to get around in the system, I just want to walk you through that really briefly. Um, everything is kind of organized in these two toolbars. Um, the left-hand toolbar is our navigation bar and gets you to the main areas of the program. Your asset area, which I'll just go ahead and click through, is going to be those instruments, test standards, loops, and equipment that you're going to use to manage your physical assets. Most commonly, you're going to have a lot of instruments. You're going to have a little less test standards. And those are going to be the main things you're going to perform calibrations on and how you want to manage. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, these types of fields that are available, and we'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, the other main area of the app on the left side is your results area. This is where your calibration results go. So you can see that this is more like an instance of every calibration has its own calibration result date. It's attached to a snapshot of those assets, in which case this is where you'd enter uh, a calibration that you're performing today one you just got back from your vendor yesterday, or what have you. The reporting area has a few really uh, key reports that we need to have in the system today. Um, you wanna have certain reports that look back in time, you have certain reports that look ahead in time, and certain reports that analyze events that are occurring in your system, like trends or traceability when you have a bad test standard. And of course, the all important calibration certificate. So even though we are paperless, you certainly can print that if you need to, uh, but most, you know, most folks these days are saving these things as PDF and sending them off to the instrument owner as needed, um, or just for the audit purposes. And of course, for admins in the system, uh, just as we talked about before, we do have a lot of nice pre-configuration in the system, such as units of measure and manufacturers, and as well as your ability to self-administer the users that you're going to manage yourself without having to worry about opening a ticket or managing uh, any of those types of details. Um, you'll be able to go in and fully uh, manage your own organization's users. So those, that's the overview of that left side toolbar, getting to the main areas. Uh, the top toolbar is going to give you just that basic uh, compact and expand of the toolbar. Uh, your organization selector dropdown, which if you had multiple organizations or perhaps a dev test production environment, 
those are basically multiple databases of PCX that are available through the same application, as well as your own user profile and settings and the ability to sign out. Uh, and of course, if you ever run into a problem, there's always that help button. And we can talk about that in just a bit as well. So what we're gonna do first is also talk about the main ways we navigate through the system when we're working with assets and results. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that asset index page. And right away, you can see at the top, we have our basic search bar. Sometimes you never know what you're gonna have in front of you to be able to search for that asset that you wanna find in the system. You might have the actual asset ID or instrument ID that you're used to managing via. You might just have a serial number. Uh, you might just have a general description that you know you put into the name of those assets in the name column across here. So what we can do here is search basically for uh, any kind of uh, containment, uh, you know, any kind of value that is contained in some of these key values can just be searched and hit the enter key to search right away for that. If you need a little more granular detail, we just hit this little drop down button. And we basically get into our sort of advanced search. Um, it's a nice, simple filtering tool that allows you to go through your basic uh, nameplate information fields, as well as at least a subset of some of your test specification data fields uh, that we have in PCX that allows you to search for items. Um, once you set up those types of lists, you can see the contents are across in the main uh, client area of the application. And there's a couple of nice things you can do with most of these columns. You can click and drag a column to move it to a new location. You can click on a column to sort uh, ascending or descending, depending upon what you're trying to do with that information. Uh, across the top here, you also have your basic pagination controls in case you have more than 50 records at a time. You have your basic record counts that apply to your current filter. Then you have your basic action items that you can do. If I select one or more instruments, depending upon what I'm trying to do, um, I can edit that instrument, uh, delete multiple items. I can clone an item in case you have something that's a nice example of what you want to create more of. Um, I can pick an asset and either right from the overlay, I can start a calibration. I can right click and start a calibration or I can certainly use the toolbar at the top. So it's all the kind of simplistic ways of getting to those actions that you really want to do, as well as uh, a couple of grid level controls, such as being able to reorder and display the columns in a layout of your choosing by this toolbar, the customize columns button, as well as once you get that view that you want to uh, use, there's really two nice things you can do with this information. One is you can export that grid right to Excel. So no matter how many pages of information I have, I can export that into a single file that I can simply download and share. The other nice thing we can do is use our My Views, which is similar to the advanced query system in ProCal, that you're assigning a name for your filter, your columns, your sorting uh, that you wanna use for those assets. So as an example, I've used one of the classification flags that we have to indicate uh, some assets that need specs set up. So when someone created this asset and they weren't sure how they were calibrated, they created the asset, uh, this asset six pressure transmitter, for instance. And if I can right click and do edit, uh, or just use the edit button here, I also can expand this view. This is where we get into the actual edit of that asset. And you can actually see uh, in the, the middle right here, we have a multi-use classification flag system, which to me is really nice because we've seen a lot of cases of one field being used for GMP critical, GMP non-critical, non-critical safety. In reality, you have a multitude of different types of classifications you need to worry about for your assets. Also, we can use some of these, uh, these types of classifications to really just talk about you know, record management. So in this case, we have a record management concern of this really needs review, needs specifications. I can go in and clear those clear those out in preparation for what I'm about to do. Uh, we also have some nice uh, features like type ahead uh, for the actual pre-configured manufacturers um, and things like that. But what I'll do here is also go through, uh, we have a tab interface still, right? And the next tab we wanna deal with in our asset record is gonna be our test specification. Um, so in our test specification, uh, we really have uh, three types of test specifications that we manage today. Our test point accuracy test is gonna be like our standard test in ProCal when the test type is blank. Uh, test point strategy, a range or two 
uh, and test points to test for accuracy at each point. We have our switch test. That's going to be the idea of ramping up and down a signal and detecting some state change, you know, whether it's a short or an open of a switch. That's the type of test you could do with a switch. And of course, for anything that's external or something that you just want to keep track of, we certainly have our built-in manual pass-fail, which is just giving you the opportunity to set a separate as-found and as-left result, uh, just simple pass and fail uh, for those types of tests. So what we'll do is any of these little help icons you might see through the application will help give you guidance as to what the meaning of that field is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick test point accuracy. And you can see that the form is populated, you know, specifically for that. And I'll give this a title. So I'll just do this uh, transmitter pressure. Uh, thanks Google Chrome for the autofill. It's a nice thing to have. And um, what we'll do is, you know, hopefully it's just kind of simple. It's very simple to what you see a lot of and people doing the calibrations this way is that I can go ahead and just pick a simple five up test. It's very common. Uh, I know that this is a very, very simple zero to 100 PSI transmitter. And because I want to test the milliamp output function of this transmitter, I don't want to worry about PSI to PSI as if it were an indicator or a gauge. I don't want to check the PSI at the control board. I want to actually directly calibrate the milliamp output. I can click on the output range and go ahead and fill in my four to 20 milliamps. And you can see, again, there's a nice filtering capability. I can just hit enter on that selected milliamp and it has pre-filled that, filled that for me in pretty quickly. Uh, and also we have those common uh, types of tolerances. In this case, a simple selection of your tolerance type, percent of span, and I'll just say it's a 5.5. And so now I've set up my specs. I have a five point calibration, zero to 100, four to 20 milliamps. This is very common that you see so many of. So when I like this asset, uh, my little Rosemont 3051 here, and uh, I'll go ahead and save and close that. Uh, I may want to go back and clone that a couple of times. So now it no longer needs specs, no longer meets that criteria. So it's off my checklist of things I need to set up for specifications. But I'm going to go ahead and reset back to my main instrument view and go ahead and just sort by modified. I can see that first that record I just modified. And so now uh, we've gone through this asset setup flow in a sense. Some of the information was already there for us as, a, as another team member maybe set up and I've enhanced that data to be ready for calibration. One of the things I could do next is just go right over to the right and start a calibration. Um, I also could go to my main dashboard, hit the new button that's ever present and contextual and start a calibration from there and start typing A.6, confirms that. You know, I'm hitting the tab key to confirm these different result factors. So those are a couple of different ways you can create a new calibration. You can enter it. If you had that barcode to scan on that field, you could simply go to the asset that you've already searched for and click the button to start it right away. In this case, now we're talking about, I've got the asset in front of me. Maybe I've got my 754 in front of me and I'm gonna, I've got my pressure module on it. I'm gonna calibrate this pressure transmitter. And what am I gonna do is uh, really some of this information you can fill in. Uh, you may wanna, capture some detail about the calibration that you're doing, such as what is its condition, you know, uh, perhaps it's in good condition. Just want to capture that it, a flag that says it's coming to be in good condition. So again, just like our classification flags, we have some categories of information you can put in this actions box. What I just want to get right into the calibration. The calibration grid is set up with our five test points we wanted. It's set up ready to receive any deviations from actuals that we need to put in. And it's set up to just be my as found test because I know I want to go through my as found testing first before, just in the case of doing an adjustment, I want to do my as left test. So, just like ProCal has auto recalculate limits and the idea of being able to deviate from your nominals, we have that right here in this interface as well. The idea that, okay, I'm going to keep this as my zero point and uh, everything was okay there. And you can see the immediate color coded feedback. Uh, and remarks per test point that we can make uh, that gives you an indication that everything's good with that test point. I'm gonna move on and let's say in this case, what if I only hit 23 PSI? Okay, it, it recalculated my output, slightly different from eight, it's a little bit down because it's a linear correlation to the output range. Uh, okay, uh, but I'm gonna put that as uh, you know 7.67, uh, okay, no problem. But I'm gonna go through, maybe I've got some problem here. So my high limit is 12.88. Uh, 
I'm going to say this hit uh, 14.2 and it's red, you know. So we've had that bad value and we're just going to continue on and see how we do with the rest of that calibration. So I'll go ahead and put that 16. Again, I'm just hitting the tab key to go through that. So in this case, um, you know, whether I had that value in or out of spec, things like that, um, you know, I can also reset this in case, you know, whenever you reset it, it just assumes the nominals there. Uh, because I have this automatic setup, and when I first started, it's really incomplete. I just started the calibration. And I'm going to let this determine my, my status uh, automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. That's where I'm at in this thing. I'm actually going to mark it as in progress as well, right? This is my record status for that result. These are all configurable. And you can see, because I don't have an as-left test yet, my as-found is my as-left, and my as-found test failed, automatically it's determined I'm failed. Right, I'm failed at this point. So I'm say, okay, I'm gonna go make some adjustment. Maybe I've made a heart adjustment. Maybe I've set the span. These are some flags that can be useful for down the line for searching and reporting. Um, you know, I know, you know, I know my uh, humidity and all that's good. And maybe what I've gone is I'm gonna go and do my eyes left. Now. And I copy those readings to start with uh, or to by default, but I'll go ahead and just capture the new readings that I have, four, eight, 12, okay now, 16, 20. Now everything's good in my ass left, excuse me. And uh, go ahead and uh, do that. And let me see if I can get back to that result really quick here. So now I've, I should be able to come back in here and see that my as found failed, my as left is passed. I have some, some standardized comments in my action box that it forms the system as to what I've done in between my as found and as left. And I know I was using my flute, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my select test standard. Again, you don't know if you might have your serial number in front of you, you've gotta go find that, that DPC calibrator and maybe I use, I don't know if I have any modules in here. I don't have any modules, that's okay. So if I had a pressure module, I'd be able to find that right away. Uh, and I can reset that. I could also do an advanced search. So I'm gonna just pick a couple of test standards here, select them. Again, this is great for reverse traceability. I wanna make sure I have that on my certificate. Um, I can also just make some, some remarks, you know, found, found in good condition, I'm gonna adjust it, Proof. And I'll go ahead and mark that as submitted. You know, this is something I can use as a status saying, I think I'm finished with this calibration. I'm ready for someone else to potentially review it or what have you. Uh, so now that I had that result, my most recent result at the top, one of the next things I can do in this overall workflow is to go ahead and go right to the certificate uh, icon. Uh, I could double click and see some of the details here on the, on the left toolbar. I can see that information in a detail view, uh, but I can just go ahead and click that and it's gonna generate my certificate in that other PDF format right in that other uh, window. So that's something that's easy to share, easy to save, easy to print if necessary, uh, and shows you that all that detailed information that you captured during the calibration. So it's a nice straightforward approach to the workflow from the asset to setting up the specs, calibrating it, and then generating that certificate. Uh, hopefully that taught you a little bit about how PCX operates. If you ever get stuck in PCX, there's two things I want you to know in the help box. There's always a way to go into our help center, which allows you to open that ticket. Or if you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see in that product, go to our feature portal and you can actually see some of the things we're investigating, what we're looking at working on, as well as what's live in the system in the latest release, as well as submit any of your own ideas with your email. Because uh, we really encourage your feedback on the system. You'll see uh, as you use the system, there are gonna be some opportunities to get feedback and we're always open to that. So uh, we'll get back to that presentation really quickly and just talk through a couple more points. Let me stop the share and go back to Ken's uh, slides. So a couple of things we didn't really talk that much about was our import process. We do have a sort of a similar equivalent to our data load, uh, as well as our, we did mention this self-serve user administration, but we didn't go through it in detail. You can invite users via email. Uh, that cloning existing assets is really important. And one thing I didn't talk about was uh, right now we're starting with beta support for Spanish and Brazilian Portuguese. We'll continue to expand and uh, validate those uh, languages as we go. 
Um, so those some of some, some of the items we didn't really talk to in the PCX features, uh, including I could mention also the uh, the trend report that we have, which gives a nice way of viewing the drift over time. Something we can also come back to with another demonstration one day. Go ahead and Ken, the next slide. And what we briefly want to speak to is also about the roadmap for PCX. Um, you know, I mentioned and we mentioned the Fluke uh, 754 and 753 calibrators, uh, hopefully also the Fluke 729 as well. Uh, that is something that is coming uh, sooner rather than later in terms of having that Fluke calibrator support, where in those same test specifications, we want to set up those source and measure modes. How do you want to download this to a, download this to a Fluke, perform the calibration in the field and upload it back in um, using a, a simple desktop app connected to the cloud-based system. Uh, Multi-site support is something giving that similar company-by-company -company, uh, breakdown like we have in ProCal in uh, its own version in PCX for those larger installations and larger regional uh, systems. Uh, a little bit later, uh, in no particular order, uh, definitely a native mobile applications for iOS and Android would be on our roadmap. Full featured integration APIs, everything from your SAP and CMMS, EAM, uh, we want to make sure we have the other end of that ready to go for those types of integrations, as well as any other smaller scale integrations you might be looking for. And of course, for the life sciences uh, industries, computer system validation is going to be a key element of PCS going forward and trying to plan around the best way that we can approach that for a web-based SaaS product uh, for those needs. So uh, that's my demonstration. That's my talk about PCX today. Uh, Ken, go ahead and wrap this up and let, let's see where we go. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Appreciate that, excellent. Um, so uh, real quick, how, how would you get started uh, with PCX? Please feel free to visit our website uh, if you'd like some more details, uh, information about uh, PCX or to see how you might set up your own asset information, uh, you know, expansion a little bit on what Mike just demoed, uh, just send us an email or, or write in the, uh, you know, in the Q&A area that you're interested and we will definitely set up a demo date for you. Uh, one of the best ways you can get started is actually to consolidate as best as possible all of your asset data and calibration specs in a spreadsheet to upload into PCX. Mike just mentioned that uh, in his uh, one of his last slides. We have a standard spreadsheet. We'd be happy to help analyze your data to determine what is the best path for you to follow. Um, and we ultimately provide all levels of assistance for our customers. So we're happy to have a call with you to learn more about your needs and uh, certainly look forward to hearing the questions that you have about our products. Let us now turn to our Q&A section and I'm just gonna open up here. Um, let's take a look at some of the questions that we've got. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, question number one, how do you handle external calibrations in PCX. Mike, would you care to answer that? Uh, yeah, I mean, one thing we also didn't really touch upon in a lot of detail is the ability to attach files to both assets and calibrations. So one of the nice things that I think about this example use case is the idea that sometimes you have uh, one or more PDF certificates attached to uh, what an asset's calibration history was. We can set up that asset with a manual pass fail specification. Still want to create that calibration record. But on that calibration record, what you could do a couple of things is user action flag, potentially the flag is external uh, or one of the result statuses, and go into the attachments area. All you really would need to do is declare the as found, as left, uh, you know, result in that manual pass fail test, and then go into the attachments area and attach those PDFs or whatever printouts you had capture from that vendor. Um, and that's something that gives you that record, allows you to kind of keep your schedule moving forward and things of that nature that I think is a really good fit for um, external calibrations. I don't know if you've seen any other uh, use case for that, but that, that's what I would say would be the best case for PCX. Okay. Uh, the next question is also definitely for you. What kinds of calibrations can I do in PCX? It sounds like it's just asking to expand a little bit on what you demonstrated. Yeah, um, you know, we didn't talk about a lot, but I mean, what's really great is I think it's well suited for things um, uh, for test, when we're talking about test point accuracy test, you know, um, obviously your gauges and indicators and your transmitters, your controllers, 
any of those things that have the input output correlation or even something that just has a single range. You're just saying, I'm just wanna verify that one point at the zero point or at the span or whatever. Um, those types of things are really well suited. Um, switches are really nice for like alarm functions or other types of switches that are controlling um, you know, any, any kind of other process. And then again, I think it's really hard when you look at that manual pass fail concept, it really opens it up to almost anything. Um, but I think you, you know, you would see um, a lot of different uh, types of tests uh, could still be handled in those basic test strategies. It's really just kind of like if you if you had something that you weren't sure about, you'd want to reach out to us and we can like go through the details, just like we do with ProCap. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Uh, next question, will you be able to add setup messages? Not sure if that's limited only to the 754, but because I know they have setup messages on there or whether it's a generic question, but. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, if we're talking about the setup messages for the Fluke 754, uh, I would anticipate we will eventually have that. Um, I would say I would be interested in understanding more about the need. That'd be a great example of someone, we get in the system and head over to our feature portal. And what's great about that is they can just expound, you know, expand upon, you know, what are they seeing as a need for that? Um, because we may have opportunities, for example, in the remarks area of the asset is there something that needs to appear on that calibration entry? Is it easy enough for that user to see that information? Uh, maybe there's some critical piece of information that you know before they start the calibration. And so some, definitely something we've looked at, we've looked at, and uh, we'll continue to look at in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, next question, I'm on ProCal now. Do you have a PCX migration path? And I can answer that. The answer is yes. If, if you're currently on ProCal and it's it's the right time for you to move to PCX. We will have a migration path for you. Of course, you know that migration software, so to speak, or that uh, that code is going to change as uh, as PCX evolves, and we will keep up to date on it so that we've always got a mag a migration path for our ProCal users to go to PCX. Uh, here's a question: If the asset ID is required. Can you change it later? That's something we mm. do in ProCal. Can, can we do that or will we be able to do that in PCX, Mike? Yeah, in fact, there's, there's two things I think are relevant to that question. One is uh, for the master asset record, you can change that at any time. It'll recheck the uniqueness. One other thing that's new uh, and we'll continue to kind of look at other examples of is um, right now it's one way, but we'll continue to monitor you know, what people need is that uh, a lot of times might, people might put everything in as an instrument when in actuality it's a test standard. So one of the particular things we have that's new in PCX that uh, is the ability to say, oops, I put this instrument in, can I change it to a test standard? Um, because they can still ca capture the calibration history as a test standard, they can still do a lot of those kind of things. But that's one of the things we did um, you know, for that, uh, that uh, ability. So it really should allow you enough flexibility to kind of change that at any time without being as uh, disruptive uh, to your system if you need to renumber things. Uh, Thank and you. I see a, mm -hmm, and I see a related question. Uh, you know, I'll read it out here. Go ahead. If the asset ID is entered as temporary, can you enter a calibration to it and change the asset ID and it changes the calibration? So I think um, this might not be there yet, but I think it's definitely one of those things that we're continually looking at those workflow cases. This is a perfect example of using the feedback it says maybe we need to be able to change that asset snapshot that we took uh, because it was temporary. Uh, I would say in most cases you'd want to have the asset ID, you know, known when you do that calibration, or because it could be linked back to that same asset, you might be able to see both. You know, you may be able to see well at the time of calibration it was ABC. Later on we changed it to PT one thousand. Um, there's going to be ways to work with kind of both halves of that workflow because there's enough separation that we have in the asset records when we take a snapshot of the asset for the result that uh, we probably can work with that scenario either way. It just really comes down to when we look at your specific use case, how do you want to see that that managed and can we work with that? So that's how I would answer that today. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. The, the next question is pretty specific. I'm, I'm familiar with this because both you and I, Mike, have, have talked to our friend Jeff about this. Will PCX provide support for SIS full function testing? 
Uh, and so I think when you look at the roadmap and where PCX is, it's, you know, right now you can see what we, what we talked about in terms of the industries we're serving and the, and the straightforward nature of the calibrations we're handling. Uh, but we also look ahead to the roadmap and we say that we just, we know that it took, it took us a little longer in the ProCal world for us to even add, you know, maintenance functionality, for instance, and add task list functionality. I think we'll probably get to those things sooner in the PCX roadmap based on learning how important those types of things are. Um, so when you look at uh, full function SIS testing, or you look at any kind of tests that requires um, a series of different steps, points, measurements, checks, verifications, qualifications, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what I envision in the sort of like long-term of PCX is that basically the model of those types of tests will continue to expand. I think today we're probably in the vein of more like your simplicity, the idea of going out there, being very efficient about the calibrations you're trying to do as a calibration management system. But this platform is the idea that we're going to continue to build on that vision as we go forward and take that kind of feedback into account in terms of the allowed complexity that we have. So that's my best answer I have for that today. Mm -hmm. And also, I need to make a note to study on SIS full function testing on exactly what all that entails. No problem. And uh, we've got uh, so far one last question from our good friend Kevin down on the Gulf Coast. Uh, it's a current uh, ProCal user. Will there be user-defined fields in PCX? Yeah, it's definitely on the roadmap. Again, uh, didn't demonstrate it today, uh, but it's one of those things that as we build uh, a mix of new functionality that's almost exclusive to PCX based on the technical architecture that we have and the web-based nature of it um, and, and really aiming for those key workflows like I showed you today, um, we also see that there's a number of really important features that come from ProCal that kind of give that uh, that same feature level in PCX as well. And that's including any of those kind of customizations from a customization of labels and fields. Uh, we want to know from you, uh, again, constantly asking for that feedback that we've integrated into the application even more closely today, how we can know, you know, where does that sit in your needs, uh, your the kind of needs you have. And we're using that customer feedback to drive this application forward. Uh, this is not uh, completely our own invention that we expect you guys to, uh, you know, adhere to. This is built on customer feedback and built on the customer responses we've had over the years. So thanks, uh, thanks for that question. Definitely, uh, probably already have that uh, noted as really important for Kevin. But we can continue to look at that as we go forward. Great, great. Thanks very much, Mike. So. Uh, at this point, I'm going to say thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I hope that this was, uh, you know, valuable insight uh, into uh, PCX and where we're going. And if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to get back in touch with us. I will throw up the uh, contact slide just one more time in case you want to touch base. Either Mike or I would be very happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. And uh, from the whole Prime Tech team, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it so much. Have a great rest of your day.